everyone, Gary Simon here of Corsetro. And if you're just jumping in here without watching the previous lessons that are part of this course, make sure you check out the links where you know, you know exactly where to find it and everything so you can start watching it from scratch. So in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on two different things, which is mappings and structs, which are two things we haven't touched on yet. Now, based on our current smart contract that we've been working on, it only lets you update the information with one instructor. So we're going to rebuild the smart contract from the ground up so that it allows us to add multiple instructors. And this would be a great way to demonstrate both mappings and structs. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm here in the Remix IDE. Um, make sure once again that we have the Web3 provider activated and you have uh, the test RPC running in your console so that will work. And we're going to create a new Solidity file. And I'm going to call this one courses.sol. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the pragma, the default line that you always have to specify when creating a new smart contract. And we're going to make the contract courses. Okay. So this is where we're going to first define the struct. So a struct in Solidity is just a custom type that you can define. Kind of think of it like an object. You give an object name and then it has a bunch of properties inside of it. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So what the way we start this is we're going to start with struct and then we'll call this instructor all right next we're going to have an unsigned integer of age a string of f name for first name and a string of l name for last name ta-da you just made your very first struct exciting stuff i know Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about how to create a mapping and see how these two things play with each other. So in Solidity, a mapping is referred to as a hash tab table, which consists of key types and value types. And we're going to define a mapping like any other variable type. So we start off with mapping, that's the type, and then it accepts an argument here, and this is two parts. First is the type, and this is can pretty much can be any type you know that we're used to, like an unsigned integer or an integer or a string. Uh, this our case, which is a common use case, is address. So we're going to bind the address to the struct instructor struct like that, and then we're going to name this instructors. Okay, so what this will allow us to do is we can, for instance, do a search for a specific Ethereum address and we can find a specific instructor's age, first name, and last name, and any other information you want to include in there based on that address. Okay, in the next line, I'm going to create another thing. We're going to call this an address type of array, and we're going to make it public, and we're going to call it instructor accounts. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, for instance, if I switch back to the screen, um, if we wanted to get all of the instructors, you may think to yourself, if you're new to smart contract development, that you could just create a function to get the instructors of type mapping, but it's not going to work. Unfortunately, the way things are currently structure, structured in um, Ethereum, the Ethereum VM, it won't work that way. So what we're going to do instead is to store all the addresses as an array, and then we'll be able to get those from which we can then create functions that will pass in a specific address to get the instructor name, age, um, and all that stuff. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. You will understand it though as we go along. So what we wanna do now is how do we add to a mapping, or, or in other words, how do we add um, an instructor? Well, let's create a new set instructor function. So function set instructor, by the way, I'm going to increase this just a little bit. So I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. All right. So it's going to take in first an address. We'll call it address underscore. An unsigned integer of age. A string of F name. And a string of L name. Public. All right. Then inside of here. 
we're going to put in a new variable instructor and this will be equal to instructors mapping and we'll pass in the address all right so we're creating a new a new instructor with the key of address right here next we can set the instructor age equals underscore age F name equals underscore F name. You understand exactly what's happening at this point. I hope. Wow, my shift isn't working. There we go. All right. And then also finally, we're going to reference instructor accounts. We're going to use push. We're going to push the address and then negative one here. All right, so let's see what I did. Instructor L name. Oops, that's why that needs to be capitalized. There we go. Okay, um, so again, in the arguments here, we're passing just the address, the age, um, the first name and last name. And we'll see those, um, th this all be represented over here just by a single line. So if I create this, for instance, we'll see we'd have to specify all those um, separated by a comma and coming out here next thing we're setting it and then we're adding to this instructor accounts right here okay so before we even try to play around with this let's add um, another function that will read and get from all of our instructor accounts so we'll create a new function call this get instructors plural a view public returns it's going to return the address array type and inside of here we're simply going to return instructor accounts all right so let's go ahead and create that and we have to pass in an address down here so if we get try, try to get the instru instructor accounts we're not going to see anything and what we'll do is come up here, let's just copy this address. Let me expand this so we have some room and you can see. So we put the address in uh, quotes there, and then we put the age, because that comes next if you look at the arguments. And then also what else? We have first name, Gary, and last name is Simon. So we'll set instructor. We will also get instructor there we go that returns this account right here all right so we could even change this to another account copy that and I'll just change it a different first name Henry set instructor get instructor there we go here's the second one so that's how that works all right so after that now that we have access to these all of the different instructor addresses we can now create a function to get a specific instructor so function get instructor this will be singular it's going to accept an address and we'll just call this ins for well we'll just do address like this and then a view public returns an unsigned integer a string and a string so that's in reference to the age first name and last name all right so right here we're going to return in parentheses because we have multiple um, return values instructors pass in the address age and then to make our life a little bit easier i'm just going to copy this this is going to be f name and this will be l name All right, so now let's go ahead and create this. We'll expand it. We'll just copy and paste this right here just to set an instructor. So now let's go ahead and get an instructor or get instructors rather. We'll copy this right here because that's the only one we have and we'll put that in quotes. Now get instructor and there we go. So let's uh, try to take another one real quick get a different address, copy it. We'll set one called um, 
Julie, who is 75. <laughs> I already said it. We can see we can get instructors. And it's this one right here. So we'll get the instructor information for that address. And there we go. Awesome. So we'll talk about one more thing real quick, which is going to be, you know, how, for instance, if we want to do integrate in the UI, um, how many instructors we actually have. So that's really, really simple as well. So what we'll do is function count instructors, view public returns, unsigned integer. And we're going to return the instructor accounts dot length. That's all you need. So now one final run at this, create, copy, actually we'll just copy this one, set it and then count. There we go. All right, so being that we just completely restructured the smart contract that we've been working on in the previous five lessons, we are going to learn a couple more things, but ultimately we're going to come back around to our Web3 user interface that we created and make it work with this new smart contract. Um, in that way, that will set us up to the end of the course where we're going to actually deploy the contract on a test network where you really get to see you know, the full experience of what it wait, what it's like to wait for the long, <laughs> the confirmation times. And then finally, I will probably on my end actually deploy it so you can see, at least in video, you don't have to have to do it as well to the live Ethereum network. All right, see you soon.